Hello everyone and welcome to today's documentary in which we'll be discussing how the Industrial Revolution changed the food we eat as well as food culture in general. I hope you learned something interesting, I certainly did, but without any further ado, let's get right into it. Starting us off in the early 1900s, a larger portion of the American population were either farmers or lived in rural communities, producing what they needed for themselves. However, the early 20th century soon saw an unprecedented advancement in the way food was produced. Farmers that had once produced everything from wheat and carrots to cattle and sheep now specialized in one or two crops or livestock. The advent of new innovations like the seed drill, which is a device that expedited the planting of seeds, the Dutch plow and the combine harvester dramatically increased the productivity of farms, leading to a trend that drove agricultural change throughout the 20th century, and a trend that saw fewer but much larger farms as the century progressed. In fact, between the year 1900 and 2000, the share of the U.S. workforce in agriculture decreased from 41% to 2%, all while agricultural production steadily rose. To put the impact of technology in perspective, consider this. Working by hand, a person can thresh or separate about 15 to 40 kilograms of grain in an hour. In that same amount of time, a mechanized thresher can process 1,500 to 2,000 kilograms of the same grain. And to put the different lifestyles of different generations of farmers in perspective, also consider this. Where farms before 1900 would have a few chickens for eggs, a cow for milk, and a diverse array of produce, modern farms may have millions of chickens and buy feed from another farm that only grows corn or soy. Furthermore, not only farms are becoming bigger, but crops and livestock were also becoming larger. According to an article published by John Hopkins University, compared to chickens in the, of the 1930s, today's chickens bred for meat grow to almost twice the weight in less than half the time using less than half as much feed. As a result of genetic selection for these desirable traits, the health of animals is often expended. For example, modern chickens have an increased risk of heart failure, and modern cows are more prone to udder infections. Another important innovation during the 20th century was the use of chemicals and pesticides in farming, something which had not been used before. In a 12-year period between 1964 and 1976, the use of such chemicals in the U.S. increased by 143%. But, moving on, at the same time that agriculture was being transformed by the Industrial Revolution, as were most aspects of American culture involving food. Where 50 years earlier, families, then farmers, would have sit down to have a dinner of food they had grown and cooked themselves, more modern families, having mostly migrated to the cities in search of industrial jobs, instead settled for easy-to-prepare, faster meals. As a result, the burden of producing and preparing food gradually fell on large corporations and chain restaurants. Canned food was among the first important food innovations during the Industrial Revolution. Although it was invented many decades earlier, it first saw popularity in the early 20th century, taking the increase in farming production and preserving it for longer. The growing success of canned food also paved the way for many to try new foods for the first time, as preserving it was no longer much of an issue. Considering this, it should not, should, should not come as a surprise that Chef Boyardee was founded in 1928. The first fast food restaurant, White Castle, opened in 1921 in Wichita, Kansas, and sold burgers for a reasonable five cents. Competition soon followed. The first McDonald's opened in 1948, followed in the 50s by Burger King and Taco Bell and Wendy's in 1969. By the end of the 20th century, companies like McDonald's, KFC, and other fast food chains had become vastly popular, not only in the U.S., but all around the world, marking a major shift in food culture. Today, there are over 38,000 McDonald's restaurants spread across six continents, so 
No, they have not made it into Antarctica yet, but we'll see. In modern times, though, the way we think about food and meals has shifted from being a community event and a social event to being a necessity, available when we want it. In the digital age, fast food culture has only become more popular, providing something at the moment, all thanks to the industrialized farming that allows these restaurants to serve vast amount of pre-processed food and for a very cheap price. Conversely, the rise of fast food has also brought about the emergence of weight awareness and a social drive to be healthier, as populations around the world become more obese. According to an article published by the University of Notre Dame, compared to recent decades, we, on average, live more sedentary lifestyles as industry shifts from strenuous factory jobs to specialized desk jobs. This is particularly relevant today in recently industrialized countries like India, where cheap fast food is now much more available and is often the preference among the younger generations over traditional, healthier meals. As a result, not only does India have a growing obesity problem, but its traditional food culture has also been somewhat, been somewhat downtrodden. But no matter where you look, from growing our own food to ordering Uber Eats, we've certainly changed the, the way we think about food. But at what expense? As a closing note, try to think about who you eat with and what you eat. Do you eat with your family and cook your own meals, or do you prefer to go somewhere like McDonald's or get takeout? Try asking your parents and grandparents how they used to have meals with their parents and grandparents. Well, if you've made it all the way to the end, thank you for listening, and hopefully this has at least gotten you thinking about how important food is in our lives and how much it's changed in the last century and a half. Thank you.